YouTube's relationship with content creators is massively dysfunctional. Years ago, YouTube understood that people only come to the site because of the content being posted by content creators. People don't come to YouTube for the trust and safety team. People don't come to YouTube for Susan What's-Her-Face. People come for the videos that are being made, not by the spiritless morons who work at YouTube, but by video creators who labor tirelessly day and night to produce amazing content. So YouTube wanted to keep content creators happy. Then things changed. Over the past few years, YouTube's attitude has become, we need to protect the world from our content creators. We need to protect the world from their ideas. We need to protect the world from what they say. How are we going to do this? We're going to ban their videos. We're going to randomly demonetize them with no explanation. We're going to come up with ridiculous rules and enforce them arbitrarily. We're going to send out an army of mindless bots to scour old videos for some word that just ended up on our naughty list. And if our AI finds a word that may be loosely connected to some idea that we're suspicious about, it's a strike. No posting for a week. That's what we need. Strikes. We need community guideline strikes, even when no one has violated the community guidelines. We need copyright strikes, even when no one has violated the copyright rules. We need to rain down an unholy fire of bans and strikes on our creators until their channels are nothing but rubble and ash. In other words, they came to view us, content creators, as the enemy. So now we're in this screwball situation where we're still creating the content that keeps people coming to the platform, but YouTube keeps punishing us for it. That's why I said that YouTube's relationship with content creators is massively dysfunctional. Let me give you the latest in an endless line of ridiculous examples. For the past two weeks or so, I've been posting one or two videos per day. Yesterday, I didn't post a video. Why? Because I got another completely bogus strike. I don't mean a strike where I see it one way and YouTube sees it another way. I mean another strike where YouTube takes down my video and says that I was doing the exact opposite of what I was doing in the video. And as usual, it's an old video. It's from years ago. So back in 2018, my friends and I made a video series titled Islamicize Me. The series was loosely based on a true story. One of the guys in the series is a retired Christian rapper named Vocab Malone. Vocab used to be friends with a guy named Elton Simpson. Elton Simpson was apparently a very nice guy. But Elton converted to Islam, became radicalized very quickly, and was killed during a terrorist attack. What do you do when someone starts convincing your friends to go on a killing spree? we decided to make fun of the radicalization process. So we made a series called Islamicize Me about three guys who start out as perfectly normal guys, but over the course of 30 days, decide to become terrorists. Now, whether you agree with us that we should be mocking and ridiculing the radicalization process, I happen to think that this is the best way to respond to the radicalization process, but whether you think we should be doing this or not, how stupid would a person have to be to think that in this comedy series, in which we're mocking terrorist groups like ISIS, who were convincing young Westerners to become terrorists, we're actually recruiting for ISIS. How dumb would you have to be? Watch what happens. Several weeks ago, YouTube sent me this message. Hi, Act 17 Apologetics. We wanted to let you know our team reviewed your content and we think it violates our violent criminal organization's policy. We know you may not have realized this was a violation of our policies, so we're not applying a strike to your channel. However, we have removed the following content from YouTube. Video, Islamicize Me Day 13. We realize this may be disappointing news, but it's our job to make sure that YouTube is a safe place for all, except for creators. If you think we've made a mistake, you can appeal this decision. You'll find more details below. Notice, we stand accused of violating YouTube's violent criminal organization's policy. What's the policy? Content intended to praise, 
promote, or aid violent criminal organizations is not allowed on YouTube. These organizations are not allowed to use YouTube for any purpose, including recruitment. Now, were we praising, promoting, or recruiting for ISIS? No, we were doing the exact opposite. We were mocking and ridiculing them. So I appealed. I said, did you guys even watch the video? Do you understand what satire is? How can you not see that we're making fun of ISIS, not promoting it? At the very least, you'd expect them to realize that a Christian apologetics channel wouldn't be recruiting for ISIS. I won that appeal and got this response. Hello, Act 17 Apologetics. We have reviewed your appeal for the following content. Video, Islamicize Me, Day 13. After taking another look, we can confirm that your content does not violate our community guidelines. Thanks for your patience while we reviewed this appeal. Our goal is to make sure content doesn't violate our community guidelines so that YouTube can be a safe place for all. And sometimes we make mistakes trying to get it right. We're sorry for any frustration our mistake caused you, and we appreciate you letting us know. Are you really sorry, YouTube? Because later, I got the same message, but for a different episode of the same series. I got the same takedown notice for Islamicize Me, Day 12. I had violated YouTube's violent criminal organization's policy. This time, they gave me a strike. I appealed this strike, and once again, I won my appeal. And once again, YouTube was sorry. Later still, I got this message telling me that Islamicize Me Day 2 had been taken down for, you guessed it, violating YouTube's violent criminal organization's policy. I appealed once more, once more I won, and once more, YouTube was sorry. Then yesterday, I got this message informing me that Islamicize Me Day 7 had been taken down for, shocker, violating YouTube's violent criminal organization's policy. I received a strike, so I'm not allowed to post. I appealed immediately, but sometimes, with this garbage system, appeals take weeks. In the meantime, I'm not allowed to post for a week. And if you've ever appealed a strike on YouTube, you know that the result seems to be pretty random. My friend Vocab posted a special edition of the same series on his channel. His videos have also been getting taken down. He's also been appealing. He gave them the same response I gave them. And look, his appeal for Islamicize Me Day 2 was rejected. My appeal for the same episode was granted, his was rejected. They concluded that we are indeed glorifying and recruiting for ISIS, even though they agreed with the other appeals that we're obviously not doing that. It's totally random. Am I going to win or lose my appeal to my strike over Islamicize Me Day 7? I have no idea. But whether I win or lose, I can't post. And whether I win or lose, a week from now, I'm going to get another takedown notice for another episode of the same video series. And a week after that, I'm going to get another and another and another until YouTube has gone through the entire series. Now, you may say, well, David, why don't you just take down the entire series? Because I shouldn't have to. That series isn't violating any YouTube policies. I'm not the one messing up here. They're the ones who are messing up and they just don't care. Again, YouTube is accusing us of doing the exact opposite of what any idiot can see we're doing. And besides that, taking down this series is irrelevant. It would only be delaying the inevitable. As I said, this is just one example. YouTube is doing this everywhere. The trust and safety team constantly harasses creators with ridiculous strikes when we haven't violated any rules. I have over 600,000 subscribers on YouTube. I have over 150 million views. You would think that racking up 150 million views on YouTube would have earned me the slight bit of consideration it would take to stop giving me the same stupid strike over the same false accusation over and over and over again, but it hasn't. They have nothing but contempt for us, and it's becoming extremely difficult to work like this. You can't build up any momentum on your channel when you're being harassed by the trust and safety team over complete nonsense. 
Let me say this. Years ago, I got my PhD in philosophy. I'd been posting videos on YouTube in graduate school, but I was posting videos on the side. I got my PhD, and at that point, I was supposed to go teach philosophy. I made the decision to do YouTube instead. YouTube was more fun. I loved YouTube. I realized that I would rather make a video that 100,000 or a million people will watch than give a lecture that 30 students would watch. YouTube was fun. It was exciting. People like me gave up other things. We burned bridges so that we could do something new. Here I am, years later, and I have to say, this isn't fun anymore. This isn't exciting anymore. Making videos is still fun. The YouTube community is still fun. Many of you in the comments section, I feel like I know you, even though we've never met. But YouTube isn't fun because YouTube has changed. YouTube doesn't view us as partners anymore. YouTube views us as pests that have to be slowly exterminated. Earlier this year, I went five or six months posting almost nothing. And I eventually made a video explaining what had been going on. Two of our five sons are on life support. They have a rare genetic muscle disease. For years, we've usually had a night nurse who takes care of them while my wife and I sleep. This year, there's been a nursing shortage in our area. So I took over as night nurse for my kids. And I made a video explaining that I hadn't been posting because I had to focus on my kids. But here's the thing. I've been in that situation before. I've had to take over as night nurse many, many times before, and I still made videos. If you really want to make videos, you find a way. In fact, I'm still in that situation. We don't have a night nurse. So I stay up at night with my kids and I sleep during the day. And yet, I've been making videos until I was stopped by YouTube for recruiting for ISIS. So even though I had a lot going on earlier this year, I could have made videos. I just had no motivation. YouTube has been draining the life from us. And I'm always thinking, why am I making videos for a platform that absolutely despises us? A platform that falsely accuses us? A platform that harasses us? A platform with a trust and safety team composed entirely of morons who are so irretrievably stupid that they can't tell the difference between mocking something and glorifying it. Why would I continue making videos for them? And the answer is that I was never making videos for them. I was making videos for my viewers. But I'm to the point where I would really, really like to have a different way of getting videos to you because YouTube is just awful and it keeps getting worse. Every year it gets worse. One of the worst things about YouTube, of course, is that they make it almost impossible to contact them about how screwed up they are. I've been on YouTube for more than a decade, and I only know of one way to contact them when they screw up. They have a Twitter page, at Team YouTube. I've tried asking them about this ridiculous, violent criminal organization's policy. I can't get a response. If you want to try, you can contact them on Twitter. You can share this video and ask them why their system is so screwed up. Let me know if you get an answer. I'm actually to the point where I'm hoping that they just ban me and get it over with so that I can start rebuilding somewhere else, somewhere over the rainbow where platforms treat their content creators like human beings, not like diseases. Where do we go from here? I'm not sure yet, but let me know what you think in the comments section.